It's 1941, and Europe is already embroiled in World War II. The United States is worried. Conquering armies now stood on the shores of the Atlantic. They're worried about the possibility of an attack on our northeast coastal cities like Philadelphia, New York, and Boston. The danger was suddenly close. So they scout a location for a massive weapons depot to help us defend our Atlantic coast. They find a spot in upstate New York, about 300 miles northwest of New York City, between the shores of the Seneca and Cayuga Lakes, named after the Iroquois people that lived there before the Europeans ran them off the land. In 1941, the Department of War seized about 11,000 acres of farmland. The people are booted from the land and their homes are destroyed. For 60 years, they're only allowed to visit their family graves once per year. So what would come to be known as the Seneca Army Depot would be a major supply base for the U.S. Army from World War II all the way up through Desert Storm. The Army built these structures known as igloos to hold the munitions, and later on, radioactive materials from the Manhattan Project would be stored there. Starting in the Cold War, it would house likely the largest arsenal of nuclear weapons in the country and would be the locus of frequent pacifist protests, including this one massive all-women encampment for peace. But I am not an expert on military history, so I won't be talking about the scorched earth campaign against the Iroquois, about dispossessed farmers or Lance missiles or nuclear Armageddon. Instead, today, I want to talk to you guys about Deer. So my name is Christina Berge, and I'm also decidedly not an expert on deer. I was on the Whitetail Deer Wikipedia page late one night uh, in pandemic era 2020, because I have this issue where I know a lot about far off animals, but really don't know terribly much about the animals closer to home. So I was trying to rectify that by reading up on deer biogeography as one does. Anyway, this was how I first learned about the former Seneca Army Depot in Romulus, New York, which has the largest herd of white, white-tailed deer. So when the base was created, it was enclosed by 24 miles of six-foot-high steel fence. And this being the Northeast United States, there were plenty of white-tailed deer inside of there. White-tailed deer, named for their white tails, are super common in New York. Like, here are some friendly ones that live near me. So by the 1950s, soldiers on the base had spotted deer that were completely white, probably due to some recessive genetic trait. And within a couple decades, there were over 200 all-white deer intermixed in the normal brown herd. So they had just reopened uh, self-guided audio tours when I first learned about this Army Depot deer thing. So I ended up planning an entirely deer-based road trip to see the Seneca white deer as well as some elk out in Pennsylvania. Hoping to have an ungulate-filled weekend but that, that'll be for another video. Mind you, this was uh, during the pandemic era, era pre-vaccine, so we didn't stop for any food, we didn't even stop for indoor bathroom breaks. Very nice roadside peeing spot. And we camped the entire way. I got a beer, I got a nice fire that a nice man made with a flamethrower. The only person I talked to indoors was the girl selling tickets to the deer attraction. So the full drive was like 13 hours, and I somehow convinced my husband to come along. I rented a fancy lens, and I, I tried to keep my hopes low, since there was a decent chance that I, I wouldn't spot a deer, or else I'd go all that way and just see brown ones. So to distract myself from that possibility, and also entertain my poor husband, I read this book that I bought used online, a, a fictional story in which the white deer feature prominently. What is it called? Crown of Serpents. It's a traditional Seneca Indian... Photoshop filter. My family used to read Harry Potter together on, uh, on road trips. Which oh. author do you think is more problematic? <laughs> Jake Tanunda, combat vet, Freemason, and half Seneca Indian, is stunned when he gleans from the journal's cryptic Masonic passages clues to the location of an ancient shaman's crown once protected by the White Deer Society. The clues to the crown ultimately lead them deep within sacred Indian caves hidden under the abandoned Seneca Army Depot, where the magnitude of the crown's power is revealed. Now there's a scalping. As he inhaled, the stench of fresh human excrement rose from below and filled his nostrils. It's very, uh, focused on poop. That's like the third poop reference, and I'm only on page nine. The end. So you drive onto the base and listen to this audio tour as you very slowly meander around. And this was the first time I'd ever rented equipment or traveled far to make a video, so I was, I was really uh, nervous that I wouldn't catch a glimpse of any of the 200 white deer there. Or maybe I'd spend 13 hours in the car only to see the same brown deer that I have uh, back home. 
but nonetheless, I was I was trying to look on the bright side. It was pretty sweet regardless to see the, the old bunkers, like this one with a, a hornet's nest in the door. And it was cool to hear the narrator talk about the anti-war protests and, and see the old kind of decaying railway infrastructure. Also, did you know that vultures have a, a hole through their beak to improve their olfaction to let them sniff out carrion better? I had no idea. So. Thanks to the zoom lens for, for allowing that insight. I guess it was worth the expenditure. And then, thank God, we spotted a white deer. Look at it. It does look a little bit inbred, like, you know, uh, doesn't it? But I guess kind of all deer, if you look at them head on, look a little bit weird. So these deer are not albino. Albino animals uh, have a complete absence of, of pigment, causing an all-white appearance, but then also pink eyes, pink noses. Usually it goes along with really poor eyesight. So instead, the Seneca deer are leucistic. Leucistic animals lack pigment over all or part of their body, in which case they're called piebald. Leucistic animals like the Seneca deer have normal brown eyes and brown noses. So I was wondering if these weird mutant inbred deer are actually healthy. Apparently some bucks at, at Seneca show a flattening or palmation of the antlers. And, and from the photos online, I, I did spot some skin tumors, but I don't know if they're at a higher rate you know, than typical brown deer. Other than that, they are reported to be healthy. I love this story and I, I often talk about it in my class because I think it's an excellent example of the four forces of evolution. Evolution is just the change in the frequency of heritable traits or genetic variants over time, and the four forces of evolution are the forces that can cause those allele frequencies to change. So first up, we have mutation. In our deer example, this would be the variant causing the all-white appearance to arise by happenstance. So the next force of evolution is gene flow, which is the movement of genetic variants between populations. In our case, the deer are at least partially cut off from other populations by the tall fence, which restricts migration into and out of the Seneca Army Depot land. So because of this, gene flow is restricted. Next up, we have random genetic drift. So this refers to the phenomenon, again, occurring by happenstance, where the frequency of the white coat allele will vary from generation to generation. And these fluctuations are more pronounced in smaller populations, like the one inside the Seneca Army Depot. And then finally, we have selection. So normally selection would act to remove the white coat allele. If you've ever driven through Northeast United States, you know how good deer are at camouflaging. All white deer would instead be easier prey for predators, so we'd expect the white coat variant to be eliminated from the population by natural selection. But there is another way that selection may be influencing the white coat in these deer. So the head of the depot, Colonel Franklin Kemble Jr., really liked the white deer. I like the white deer, so I see where he's coming from. So in 1957, he forbade the hunting of white deer. Soldiers were still allowed to hunt the brown deer, but white deer were off limits. So this artificial selection would have caused the deer with the all white coats and the white coat variant to increase in frequency. Anyway, that was the story of my weird cabin fever induced pandemic road trip to go see some mutant inbred deer on a decaying army nuclear depot up in upstate New York. In an upcoming video, I'll talk about the second half of the, the deer trip where we went out and saw some elk in Pennsylvania. So this video concerned natural and artificial selection. The next one actually has to do with sexual selection. So I'm ending up making a weird like kind of mini documentary about selection in deer. So stay tuned for, for that and other sciencey videos, uh, mostly about evolutionary biology and a weird frequency of uh, ones related to deer. All right, thanks and see you guys later. It's a big enough bonfire. You can see it reflecting my glasses. The grass is definitely on fire, a lot. Cheers. What a wonderful night.